Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here. Telephone technology has always been cool and a little intriguing and fun. Now, most of us recognize Alexander Graham Bell as the father of telephone technology. But like most inventions of the 19th century, it's not without its controversy. In 1849, Antonio Meucci started developing what he called the talking telegraph, basically the telephone technology. In 1871, he filed a caveat for his invention. However, due to hardship, he was unable to renew that caveat, which allowed Bell, in 1876, to file his patent. It was also thought by some historians that Elisha Gray was trying to file similar technology caveats at the same time. In fact, it's said that on February 14th, 1876, the day that Bell, or at least his attorney, went to file his patent for his telephone, Elisha Gray's attorney also went to file his caveat. However, Bell's attorney was fifth in line, Gray's attorney was 39th in line at the patent office, and so Bell got the patent and Gray did not get to file his caveat. Now as kids, most of us, at least back in my day, learned about telephone technology with this. Two cups and a string. Now one person would talk into one cup or can, you would keep the string taut, and then that vibration would travel across the length of the string and the other person would hear it in their ear. Here, let's try it. New phone, who did? <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so telephone technology has advanced, I'm gonna say quite a good bit since those early days, but it's still fascinating and intriguing and we still wanna build with it and hack it and understand it. Well, now we are able to give you that opportunity with this. The new SparkFun LTE Stick LARA R6. The LTE Stick uses the LARA R6401 cellular module from Ublox. Now before we go any further, I need to let you know that this module works only in the North American region right now, so sorry about that rest of the world. However, in this region, it supports both voice and data with the LTE bands used by AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and FirstNet on LTE FDD bands 2, 4, 5, 12, 13, 14, 66, and 71. The module has two UARTs, USB 2.0, I2C, I2S for digital audio, and nine GPIO. The board itself has a nano SIM card slot, allowing you to select your carrier of choice. Just be sure to check with your provider for Alara R6 compatibility. Along with those breadboard compatible pinouts, there are several other interfaces broken out to test points for those who want to get into some advanced work. They appear as small copper pads on the back of the board, grouped into three clusters labeled I2C, GPIO, and UART2. Now these tiny pads do not have individual pin labels, so you'll need to refer to the board files to identify each pin location. There are also a pair of buttons, on and reset, along with two red LEDs as indicator lights. There's also a USB-C connection for interfacing, as well as two antenna connections, primary and secondary. So, We'd like to show you a little bit of what you can do with the SparkFun LTE stick. To start with, I'm just gonna do a little simple messaging with MQTT. Now MQTT stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport, and it's a simple and lightweight messaging protocol. It's great for devices with limited bandwidth or resource constraints, which makes it ideal for IoT applications. Now I'm gonna be using Hive MQ because it requires no account, no login, anything like that. It's great for a fast, quick demo like this. Of course, it can do so much more than I'm going to show you here. And if you actually do need a scalable MQTT broker, really check these guys out. Okay, so with our LTE stick, I'm using the SparkFun Thing Plus ESP32 Room. Uh, let's take a look at my screen and I'll walk you through everything I'm doing. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got example eight MQTT up. I'm, I've already uploaded that. I don't want to make you sit through that. We hit the reset button and we should see, yep, there it is. Uh, U-Block Cellular Example 8, MQTT, press any key to begin. So we go up here, we hit enter. Now it's going to ask us some questions. First is our MQTT broker server name. So we'll go over here to Hive MQ, and we can find that right here. It says broker. We're just going to copy that, and then we'll go back over to our serial window, serial monitor, and we will paste that in, hit enter, and that is loaded up. Now it'll ask us some new things, server port number. We can just leave that as the default, 1883. So just leave that blank, hit enter. It will ask for the client ID. This can be any name you wanna make up. Um, for today, I'll call it, let's call it Rob's LTE test. 
Great, now it's connected, that's beautiful. So enter a topic to publish to. Now you're gonna publish and receive. So to publish, let's call it, this is gonna be the outgoing stuff. We'll call this um, Rob's LTE Stick 1. Great, enter there. Perfect, now it's gonna ask the topic to subscribe to. This will be what you receive. So we'll call this Rob's LTE Stick 2. You think with the word creative in my title, I could be more creative, but this is what you get today. Okay, this is all set here. Now we're gonna go over to HiveMQ and set up this half. In the browser, we're gonna go here. We will, don't worry about what's in those fields, just hit connect and that should get you up and running. There we go. Now the best way to do this I found is to subscribe to a couple of topics. Um, basically, it'll be our subscribe and read the two topics we put in our serial window. And they are, just to make sure, let's see, Rob LTE Stick 1 and Rob LTE Stick 2. So we'll add a new topic subscription. Now we can choose a nice color up here too. Let's see, Rob's LTE Stick 1. Color, pink, fine. We will subscribe. Now you can't hit return because that'll just make this window go away. You have to hit the subscribe button. There we go. That's one. Now we will add a second one. This will be Rob's LTE Stick 2, like we entered in our serial window, different color, subscribe, not enter, subscribe, good. Now we've got these two here. So let's go back to our serial monitor and let's send something. Uh, let's send, let's say, hello from my LTE Stick. That in there, hit return, and you can already see in the Hive MQ window that's come up under messages. That's brilliant. So we know that we are sending from our LTE stick. Now let's send something back from Hive MQ. We'll go up here. Now we need to change the topic to Rob's LTE stick two, because as you can see by the color, Rob's LTE stick one sent the message here. So to send back, we're going to have to do two. So Rob's LTE stick two here will return the message, reply to the message with. Hello from my browser. Oh, and as you can see, I accidentally hit enter there. It did nothing but a carriage return. Click on publish. You can see here that message went. And now if you go over to our serial monitor, you can see a new message is available. Click to read. And we, so we enter a blank field and we see hello from my browser. Beautiful. So now we know we are communicating both ways over MQTT with our SparkFun LTE stick. Now, there's another way to interface and really dig into the capabilities of the LTE stick, and that's with uBlox's M Center. Now, if you've ever used their U Center software for GNSS stuff, then you know how good their software is. M Center will let you work directly with their LARA module. Now, there are a number of devices that can communicate with messaging over MQTT, but what about voice? That's right, we can communicate over this with digital audio, or as they used to call it in the old days, making a phone call. So I'm going to give my old pal Drew a call, see what he's up to. It's connecting. Oh, hey, look at that. I'm getting a phone call. Hey, Rob, how's it going? Hey, Drew, good. How you doing? I'm very well. How are you? I already All said right. that. How's the spark phone working out for you? It's working great. Uh, how's, the, how's the call quality for you? It's, it's actually pretty good. I'm really impressed by this. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I'm happy with it, too. Good, 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 good. Well, why don't you tell the folks a little more about it? Yeah, I'd be happy to, and I will send you a text when we're done. Sounds good. Talk to you in a bit. I mean, yep. hear from you in a bit. <laughs> See you then. All right, bye. That was an actual phone call that I just had with Rob uh, with using the new LTE stick as part of what I call the breadboard phone. Uh, one of the great features about the LARA R6 module on here is that it has an I2S audio interface. And that allows you to perform phone calls like we just did. And so here I'm using the audio codec breakout that Pete made last year, connected to a speaker and a microphone so that I can actually make those phone calls. And down here at the bottom, we have an ESP32 uh, Thing Plus that is handling all the communication here. It's not actually uh, sending any of the audio. It's just you know, interfacing between the LTE stick and you know, setting up the audio codec, as well as the user input and output devices that I have on the back here. Of course, I have to use the quick keypad for this because it's a phone. And here I have one of those tiny little OLEDs. I probably should have used something bigger, but it works fine. 
Now, if you're going to do something like this, it's important to note that the SIM card selection is really important. Uh, and you want to make sure you choose a SIM card that supports all the features that you need. For example, the hologram SIM card that we sell does not support phone calls, and so you'll need to choose something else. Uh, my, I'm actually just using the SIM card for my phone for this, and that works totally fine for me, although I have experienced some other SIM cards that they may work technically, but they don't actually work with the, the LTE stick. So you need to make sure you choose that carefully. Once you have a SIM card that you know, works, then you can actually run this example. And here I have this menu system set up, and so I can navigate through here. If I want to dial some number, then you know, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, I could dial that number, but instead I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go into the texting menu and I will send a text to Rob. Now you may be thinking, how do you send a text when you can only enter in numbers? Well, back in ye old days of phones, we had uh, T9 texting. So I've implemented a very rudimentary version of that where you press each button multiple times to cycle through different, num different letters. So I'm gonna tell Robert we're done. So we had uh, D is up there, O is there, N is there, and then, whoops, one more time. E is there, and that is our message done. So I'll move on, and I could enter Rob's number here, but I actually have him on speed dial. I have him as number one, and I'll go ahead and send that text. And that is the breadboard phone. Oh, incoming message. He's done. Okay, that is really cool. So look, if you wanna be cool like Drew and work with, build, and create your own cellular projects capable of both data and voice transmission, then look no further than the new SparkFun LTE stick with Ublox's Lara R6. Get yours over at our website, and you know the drill. Stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking. So if I put it to my ear, they won't be able to hear it. So uh, let's try this, see if this works. Wait, okay. Whoops, too much tension. <laughs> of course, like, I just said of course twice in a row, didn't I? I don't like that. That one didn't count. Ring, 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 ring. Breadboard phone. First, first time of the new year. <laughs> but like most inventions of the, I'm trying so hard not to say, of course. <laughs>